the knowledge we have can enhance patient outcomes. You know, we treat many personal injury patients who suffer with inflammation. These patients would greatly benefit from an anti-inflammatory diet. Doing so will give your patient the, the additional help they need to decrease their pain. The patient will experience relief and heal faster, so you can give your patients long-term repair. To heal, remember, if you've watched any of my past webinars, uh, we talk about the gut, the microbiome a lot, because that really, the weakness in the gut microbiome is what um, affects degeneration, decay. Because if you take a C-spine x-ray and you see a C5-6, you know, 50% decrease, little bone spurs there on the end plate, but you know they were in an accident 10, between 10, 20 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, they're like, hey, how did you know that? And because it degenerated, wore out because of the previous trauma they were in. Um, but if they would have had their their gut healthy, just Google microbiome and joint pain, you know, then they would have would have not would have not had that. And so um, we're going to go through um, some things about how to help them um, have better cases. And then that's the case. Guess what? They're going to refer their friends and family to you. Um, which what happens? So let's see here. Um, according to the National Highway Traffic Administration, each year there are five point two five million driving accidents. Chiropractors are uniquely positioned to help patients who have been in auto accidents. It's more commonplace each year for people in auto accidents to seek chiropractic care. Every year it gets more and more. And, um, you know, attorneys love them or hate them. You know, they're the ones that see. And if you have uh, the ability to work with a, uh, a nurse practitioner or a PA or an MD who can give your, your case a thumbs up uh, as a second opinion. If you do that, attorneys love that because attorneys love two or three doctors on this case. It just makes their case stronger, as you know, the, you, those of you that are into this world. It also becomes so mainstream that a law firm in San, Sacramento, California, specializing in auto accidents, has this phrase on their website. Delay in seeing a doctor of chiropractic puts your health at risk. Okay? So it's they're, they're now because they've seen it. They've seen people who are in an accident. They, wake a, they wait a month or two or three and then they decide, hey, I'm not getting any better. And that also doesn't look good for the case. You know, if you wait to go in a few months, you know, the defense attorney's like, well, why did you wait? You must have not been that hurt. I mean, I've been in court. I've been an expert witness. I mean, it's not good, you know, for, you know, your patient. You know, let your patients know if you're in, in an accident, even a little small fender bender, uh, come in. Because I've been uh, trained with the Texas Institute, you know, for accident reconstruction because, you know, just a little fender bender. The, the cars they make these days can actually take a, you know, 10, 15 mile an hour punch and not see any damage on the outside. But you have to get underneath and look at the struts, look at the, you know, the shocks, and they've been decompressed maybe six inches. But there's a lot of blunt force trauma like that in a, in a small rear end accident, you know, that acceleration, deceleration issue. So tell your patients, if you're ever in an accident, come in, let's check you out. When I opened my own practice, I started treating a lot of personal injury patients. Because of that, I started doing rounds with orthopedic surgeons at the local hospital. Actually, I went to two places, the east side and the west side. At first, I just stood back and watched, you know, because I, I was the chiropractor, right? But eventually, I made comments as we reviewed x-rays because I, I, I actually wanted to be a radiologist because I love x-rays so much, but that was going to take another three years of school. My wife was like, no, let's just get going, you know, no more school. Um, and one of the biggest takeaways from my time doing the rounds at the hospital was something unexpected I heard from an orthopedic surgeon. But just a little background on there. So uh, I would look at the MRIs and the, and the x-rays and I say, hey, let me see what I can do so I can, if, I, if we can avoid surgery and stuff. So I started getting some referrals from these orthopods. And uh, the problem was they came to see me, they were getting better and they never had, they never wanted to go back to the orthopedic surgeon to maybe have surgery. So they're like, so next thing you know, they're referring to me and they're not going back. So they're not making any money. So they kind of stopped referring to me because I was helping too many people. And that is that crazy or what? Well, this, this surgeon said he would no longer perform back surgery on anyone who was smoking at the time of surgery. Rather, he required back surgery patients to stop smoking at least one month before surgery because of the decreased blood flow to the tissues and smokers in the spines. And he was tired of failed back surgeries on patients who were toxic. So he would call it a dry cut. Person who did not smoke, as he cut through the back of the spine to do the surgery, it was very vascular. But if they smoked, it wasn't as vascular. Hence, when they sewed them back up, it didn't heal as well. And so that's why they have to pay so much in malpractice because 
you know, they're doing surgery on people that are like from couch potatoes to athletes. In fact, that reminds me, uh, those of you who've done personal injury, you know, somebody who's a, a, who works out at the gym, they're pretty fit, they're in an accident, they're going to heal so much faster than somebody who sits at a desk in the couch potato. They're going to take so much longer to heal. So you have to watch out for that. I started to notice in my own personal injury, you know, patients who are heavy smokers didn't heal like I thought they should or, or like, you know, they wanted to. So I noticed specifically that patients who had high levels of toxic, who of toxicity simply didn't heal like those who had a cleaner lifestyle. So, you know, we have to educate our patients about not just now, but saying, you know, if, if you're eating better, uh, we have this nutrition, I'll, I'll explain in a minute here, it, it slides down. If you do this, you're, you're going to prepare yourself to, to not be injured. To not, so the um, uh, jazz here, the uh, Utah jazz, they had a chiropractor for 24 years, Dr. Bueller, and um, they would always get treated. They were the least injured team. In fact, John Stockton, uh, there was a, a game that during the playoffs, Jordan, you know, against the Bulls, and he sprained his ankle. I mean, you can even watch the video uh, on, on, on the court. He sprained, like literally 90 degree. So he went, he got helped off and Dr. Bueller worked on him and he came back and played, made like the winning shot, stuff like that. So, um, you know, injury, just if you are, you explain to your patients, talk to your patients that to keep them healthy, because if you're in a car accident, we got to look at you, check you as soon as possible. So around another time, um, around that same time, I was treating a patient who let me know that he was scheduled to have knee surgery, knee replacement. Um, he told me about this surgery and to explain that he would be missing the next several appointments. Then he showed me, he showed me something that surprised me. Um, he pulled, a, he folded a piece of paper from his pocket and they showed me, handed it to me and said, here's a list of the eating guidelines my orthopedic surgeon gave me. I have had to follow this all month before my surgery. And I have to continue following this for a month after my surgery. So if a surgeon is doing this, medical doctor who doesn't really have any formal training in nutrition, why in the heavens does chiropractors, why are we doing this? Oh, I don't really know about that. Yeah, you do. You had four years of nutrition. If you don't know it, talk to me. I'll train you or learn about it. But you need to help your patients because if they're not, if, if they're eating crap, you're not going to be able to help them. You're not going to be able to help them. And so... I took a piece of paper and I examined it, realized that this, this orthopedic surgeon had given him an anti-inflammatory diet. It includes a list of foods that he should eat as well as food lists that he should not eat. Yeah, we can do that to our patients too. The orthopedic surgeon had given him eating guidelines that would reduce inflammation. Sticking with the diet prescribed by him would help better surgical outcomes, better post-operative. Again, I was surprised that this doctor was prescribing an anti-inflammatory diet. I was blown away. Like, who is this guy? Who is this? So my curiosity got the best of me. So I contacted the surgeon. I explained that we had a patient in common. I wanted to make sure he knew about his treatment in my office. During the conversation, I discovered that the orthopedic surgeon just lived up the canyon in Park City, Utah. Okay. Now he was an avid skier, skater, and sports enthusiast. Okay. And nutrition was a big part of his life. This surgeon had discovered that he experienced better surgical outcomes when his patients followed an anti-inflammatory diet. Who was that surgeon? Right there in front of you, Dr. Eric Hyden. Does he look pretty shape, in good shape right there? Uh, yeah, he's five-time gold medalist. So um, he's basically realized if you eat good, you're going to do better physically. If you don't eat good, you're not going to do well. So he kind of discovered this on his own, not from medical school, but just because of his own efforts. Both of these orthopedic surgeons learned firsthand that an anti-inflammatory diet helped their patients get better outcomes. Because the, the worst outcomes, it just raises their malpractice. Odds are that these doctors did not learn their protocols in school, regardless of how or where they learned the nutritional. They both decided nutrition was an important part of their protocol. And that's something they don't even learn. So we should be doing this. I'm serious. You should be, you should be I'm sorry. Should I say you, you should be ashamed if you're not educating your patient with nutrition? Because you're, you're dropping the ball. Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, maybe you shouldn't golf every week. You know, maybe you should spend some time learning more about gut health and nutrition to help your patients. If you really care about your patients, if you love your patients, they're going to know you love them and they'll take care of you just like you're going to take care of them. As chiropractors, we know the importance of nutrition. Well, most of us, we have more nutritional education than other physicians. The knowledge we have can enhance patient outcomes. You know, we treat many personal injury patients who suffer with inflammation. These patients would greatly benefit from an anti-inflammatory diet. Yet this is typically not file focus on a personal injury treatment protocol. So Again, they say, well, um, they're, they don't 
they don't have any insurance. Uh, they were in an accident and they're poor. I mean, you're, they're poor, but they live in a house. I mean, it, people will spend money on what they feel like is important to them. Okay. It doesn't have to be thousands of dollars out of their pocket. It could just be a hundred bucks a month or $75 a month to get them on nutrition. What I'm going to talk about nutritional protocols can be added very easily to personal injury chiropractic protocols. Doing so will give your patient the, the additional help they need to decrease their pain. The patient will experience relief and heal faster by combining the proper treatment with effective nutritional. Protocols can be clean, anti-inflammatory diet, and effective supplementation. So you can give your patient some relief and, and also long-term repair. So one of the things I do is uh, personal injury. We would do these meal replacement shakes from Solutions 4, um, chocolate, vanilla, mocha, strawberry, um, because there's pre and probiotics, there's vitamins and minerals, amino acids, and this helps regenerate gut microbiome so the body can heal and digest and assimilate more food because you're only as good as your food that you can actually assimilate. Remember, people who are in their 80s, they're in an assisted living center, and you went and visited Aunt Marge just the other day. She was, she was doing okay. And then you just found out from your mom that she just passed away, her sister. And you're like, from what? I, said, I just talked to her. Well, they said natural causes. You know what that means, right? Starvation. When your body gets to a point where it's not absorbing all the nutrients and minerals and protein and collagen that it needs, it just shuts down. It starts to shut down. So they're in a wheelchair. They're not moving around. And the body just gives up. I'm done. I starved to death. It's painless. It's a painless death. But they starved to death. And they're not healing. And so, of course, if you've ever been in some of these assisted living centers, you know what they're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's all cooked. Very few live enzyme foods. So it's just kind of like you put them in this place until they die, unfortunately. My mother-in-law, I can go. That's another story. I'm like, you're reading that? Oh, my gosh. Um, when a patient eats food that causes inflammation and puts undue stress on the body, they can be actively working against the treatments they're receiving or supplements that they're, make, they're taking. So, like, you know, you, you have them come in on PI maybe twice a week or something for three months or whatever, and they're not getting better. The thing about a personal injury case, there's only, like, maybe, you know, $10,000 damage, and you ask the attorney, What's this case look like? Like, well, it's not that good. So don't treat them too much because we're probably only going to get maybe a ten, fifteen thousand dollars settlement. And and in, in Utah we have a thing called PIP, personal injury protection. So we have, there's three thousand dollars to treat them. Well, if they took an ambulance ride, that just ate that up. So now the rest is on what we call a lien. That means nobody gets paid until the attorney gets paid. That could be six months to a year to two years. So you don't want to treat them so much because they're not getting better well let's just keep training you. let's just keep training you. come back in for another twice a week for a month because your gut's not healthy they're not healthy they're not eating an anti-inflammatory diet next thing you know you're billed seven eight thousand dollars and then the, the attorney's like well you know what now we got to stop treatment it's, it's getting high so then they get a settlement and then the attorney asks you um you treated him for eight thousand dollars but it really wasn't that big of an injury so we're gonna have to have you take a 50 percent cut so now you're only getting it four thousand dollars i remember one year i wrote off five hundred thousand dollars because attorneys couldn't get the settlement so again attorneys are love-hate relationship right so to help your patients get the most out of their treatment you can recommend the following anti-inflammatory diet guidelines so we have this is what i use you can use whatever you want but the solutions for uh, because I use the Solutions 4. And if you go to solutions4.com that I'll have in the very last page, you can listen to Dr. Wally Nelson here, the CEO of the formulator. Um, he's, he's, it's a family owned, so he's, his mother started it and now he's in charge, but they formulate these things that are so amazing. They've already had the FDA inside checking all their products. So it's already cleared everything. Most, F, uh, most um, companies out there, they're nutrition. When the FDA gets done with them, they're going to find out it's not in there, what's in there, and they're going to be shut down. And go out of business. So you don't want to find a company that actually puts in what they say they put in. Um, here's some recommendations. We like good, better, best. Organic dark leafy greens, bright colored vegetables. And you know these patients aren't eating this right now. Organic fruits and berries, organic eggs and poultry. So if you eat fast food, restaurant food, they're not organic. You just realize they're not organic. Wild caught fish. Why is wild caught fish important? Because anything else is farm raised where they put antibiotics and hormones. So if you eat this, you're going to get more estrogen in your body, which guys don't need more estrogen because if you increase the estrogen, you decrease the testosterone and you decrease, you know, the little ED thing. Um, and then the uh, probe or the antibiotics are injected and these animals have antibiotics in there because they can't, they're living right next to each other. They can't die. So you eat that, that destroys the microbiome, the small bacteria in your gut. And then hence it decreases your body's ability to digest. And it's not like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So when you eat fast food and restaurant food, which these people do most of the time, it's not good. Not good for 
refined cold pressed olive oil, coconut oil. Well, guess what? Fried food is not cold pressed olive oil. Fried food is canola oil. Mm. Very inflammatory. Very inflammatory. Okay. Here's acceptable. Okay. Some whole grains, legumes, even when you eat whole grains, you're going to have a spike in your insulin. Um, rice, quinoa, lentils, beans. Lentils, beans are great. That's what I have for lunch today. Some lentils and beans and an avocado and some celery dipped in organic almond butter. Oh, you got to try that. Celery and almond butter? So good. I am a huge fan of almond butter. I love it. Non, just raw, good almond butter. So good. Mm -hmm. um, non-organic or, or non-organic poultry and eggs, where most people will do farm-raised fish, or granny grass-fed red meat. Red meat is also inflammatory, so go easy on the red meat. And refined olive oil and coconut oil, and maybe some sweeteners like pure maple syrup. Probably not agave. You know, um, which oil is healthier, olive oil or coconut oil? Well, probably. Well, they're both good. They both have their properties. You know, both good omega fat, um, saturated fat. That's good. Um, people who think they're losing their mind should be taking a whole tablespoon of coconut oil every day in their shake because it's, an, it's a saturated fat and it, the brain loves saturated fat and your adrenals love saturated fat. And your adrenals are stressed out every day. Off limits, um, dairy products. You know, dairy is for baby cows and they put a ton of hormones and about in dairy. Um, Refined vegetable oils, uh, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and refined grains, pretty much anything comes out of a box or bag. Flours, tortillas. If you're gonna have a tortilla, try to get a corn tortilla as best you can. But the problem with the corn is a GMO probably. Sugars, processed food, fast food, and junk food. Alcohol, caffeinated beverages, artificial sweeteners, large amounts of red meat. So I, I just I have a patient in the other room that's getting a, a um, ultrasound, con, a contouratal ultrasound treatment for inch loss. I just found out she drinks a ton of soda and alcohol, beer every day. And she's wondering why she can't lose weight, you know? So I've already spent some time educating them and hopefully it'll stick. So here's an anti-inflammatory, some guidelines. Omega fatty acids. This curbs a joint a stiffness and decreased inflammation swelling while increasing the effectiveness of other anti-inflammatory agents. A study found that omega-3 fish oil, good fish oil like salmon, sockeye salmon oil, not arch anchovy, sardines, and holy mackerel, can be used as an alternative to NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, for pain. Drags for pain? Oh, that's a typo. So don't take it for drags, but it's drugs for pain. After 75 days on, on fish oil, 59% of patients in the study discontinued the use of NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, for pain. This also showed that 88% were satisfied and it proved they, they stated they would continue to use the fish oil. So there you go, have some great quality fish oil. And, you know, because the doctor, they didn't go to their doctor, their MD, and he's it's not going to prescribe them. You don't want them on a lot of anti anti non-steroid anti-inflammatory, like a lot of Advil because they have pain. Get them some fish oil. And guess what else reduces inflammation? Vitamin D. Uh, this also was published in the Global Journal of Health, showed non-specific musculoskeletal pain associated with vitamin D deficiency. So calcium absorption was also reduced with the GI of vitamin D deficiency. So let's say you have two twins, two twins that are identical. Um, one twin is level or above level of vitamin D levels in her body. The other twin is down here. The twin who is lower uh, deficiency in vitamin D, is they're gonna have more pain. They're gonna want more drugs, more opioids, you know, oxycontins and codeine, all that stuff. But you don't need that. You know, you put them on some fish oil and then put them on some vitamin D3, some really good quality stuff. And you'll see big change in their painful guidelines. Um, supplementation, 75% of those with vitamin D deficiency completely eliminated their pain. Other studies have shown that low levels of vitamin C increases the need for narcotics, like I said. So vitamin D um, is so important. And also studies have shown that adequate amounts of vitamin D in the body can decrease the risk of like, cancer. There's an E that was left out on there, disease, um, or, or osteoporosis, depression, Alzheimer's, and many others. So S4 vitamin D is an easily absorbed liquid. Another one, that this is what I love. Like we go on these big hikes, you know, on a Saturday and I just, you know, for three miles, four miles in the canyon and we're, I'm packing around a 30 year old little boy on my back. The dude is getting heavy. Um, so solutions for joint muscles. So when I come home, I take six of these things and it feels like I just took an Oxycontin, you know, an, an opioid. It helps with, you know, stiffness, swollen joints, muscle aches. It's just, it helps assist the body in healing. So I put a lot of patients on this that have any joint pain. It helps um, increase lubrication, joint inflammation, helps decrease that. And it's got a lot of great stuff. I did a seminar on this, just this product, you know, with all those herbs and nutrients. So it's a blend. It's a blend of all these anti-inflammatory herbs that are amazing. And again, 
it's 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 better than medication because you take a lot of opioids you're going to be constipated and you're going to feel like crap no pun intended but yeah this will help all so taking the time to introduce an anti-inflammatory diet as well as an effective supplementation to your personal injury patients get them on 25 50 75 dollars a month have long-term positive results for your practice is the thing about personal injury patients once they're done they're like done you never see them again so why is that because we didn't educate them. we're just like slam bam thank you for coming in this, the, the increased results in patient outcomes will be worth a small amount of time required to get the protocols going into your office. This can also bring additional income, like $10,000, $100,000 if you, if you do it right. <laughs> so, so PI patients will come in, you know, maybe they're 50, 100 pounds overweight. Oh, you let them know you have a weight loss program too. And you let them know whether it's weight loss or maybe they're in their 60s, 70s. Guess what they're going to have? They're going to have neuropathy. So you have a neuropathy program you can also do but they're coming in for auto accidents. So then you're going to get them on a, a, a shake a month. Let's say a shake. So they're going to spend $50 a month and you make 25 of that. So you get them on a shake a month and you get them on recurring revenue. So you get them on recurring revenue. So uh, you get, so 10 people spending $50 a month. What's that? $500 a month. Is that right? Angie, 50 times 10. 50 times 10 is 5,000. Oh, it is? 50 times 10. Oh my gosh. Wait, no, it's 500. Okay. I added an extra zero. Sorry about that. I'm not, I'm not good at math. You know, I have to have Yeah, but it's 500. Home. I promise you. So 500. $500 a month just, and then they stay with you. And then there's ways to send out little emails, little text messages to keep them in your herd, to keep educating them about things that they may have down the road. I would say half of them will listen to you. But the, the half that will listen to you, there's a lot of benefit, a lot of good things you can do to help them, not just the time being, but you can help them down the road. So let's say they get a settlement. They get a settlement and guess what? They're going to use that settlement to come in and do weight loss, to do neuropathy. See, there's, there's money in the niches, um, but you've educated them to let them know that you do all these other things in your office. And you still know, Hey, by the way, when you get that settlement, if you want to come in here, we can help you lose 50 pounds. There you go. So these are some of the references. You can go back and look at where I got those, some of those um, uh, quotes that I did. Okay. So, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, I'm seeing patients two or three days a week because I'm still coaching other doctors. And um, so if you want to, if you have any more information you want from me, that's my phone number, my personal cell number for doctors only. And then uh, my website of what I do is singletonsystems.com. And if my, that's my email, Dr. Todd at singletonsystems.com. And that's me on the guitar, family bluegrass band, where I performed all over the country, not the world. Played at Disneyland, nah, played back in Branson, Missouri, called Silver Dollar City. Um, fun stuff. And then go fishing up at Catch a Can. So there's uh, that's a morning catch. And that's a lot of that. That's all salmon. And uh, there's one down on the bottom. I think it's a small, like a halibut. But that's my son and Nancy. And so, I mean, that's some good eating right there. You wild caught Alaska. I was in Catch a Can, Alaska. And oh my gosh amazing and they'll they'll take it they'll cut it up and they'll freeze it so when you leave that you have like boxes 50 pound boxes of frozen fish that they'll pack on the airplane take it home put it you better have a freezer big enough to pack all this because one time i had three boxes you know 150 pounds of salmon you think 150 pounds if it's 20 dollars a pound that's like 1500 dollars of salmon mm -hmm. so anyway just a little fun picture that i like to do to throw something in there